This video is going to be an outreach for the beloved, the brothers and sisters who who are perhaps weak, would be considered weak, feeble, poorly, lame, the sick, the afflicted, the kind of weaker members in the body and also babes because I have a love and a, t and a heart for anyone struggling, any 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 old mutt, any old um, excuse the expression, but any mongrel, any any lamb, any young child of God who's uh, just come unto faith and is hit with what they see in, in the world as Christianity and who are perhaps going through a fiery trial, who are um, overwhelmed by the amount of heresy, the amount of uh, vain, egotistical ambition, and all, all the ministries that you will see scattered over the uh, over the internet, and especially YouTube. Uh, there's very little substance on YouTube, and you need a uh, in the Christian body. Uh, now there's a lot of truth and a lot of good um, testimony and knowledge to be gleaned but uh, on the whole it, it, it's a sick bucket, it's a, uh, um, um, like a swill pit and you have to go in there and uh, scoop it out. Uh, but there are faithful brothers and uh, ministries and, and but there's also a lot of uh, Trinity deniers and uh, people who like, in, in my discernment, people uh, like the audience, they like the attention, and they have a big following and they have a, a faithful little clique. And if you're a, a young believer and you've just come onto faith and you're wondering, well, how, how do I proceed? I just want to bear my own testimony being a very very weak person, a backsliding person, um, struggled as a Christian, there was no internet when I was saved, there was no ministry available to take me under their wing, so to speak. So I strayed and uh, the Holy Spirit um, and the Lord fed me and built me up and established me in, in the Word and faith. But by the Lord's patience, by the Lord's long suffering and mercy, I gained a testimony of the Lord's love, the Lord's understanding, and that, that strengthened me in, in my relationship with my Saviour, my God, my Heavenly Father, and my Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I, w I want to share um, just something I wrote when I was a babe, and uh, I hope it will help and I'm going to share some scriptures to uh, clarify the testimony I'm making. I, I wrote this poem. Now when I was saved um, I had a heart just to go out and witness and I did go door knocking and so excited about tasting the love of Jesus and, and, and the joy, that, that um, unsurpassing joy that the believer experiences to know, uh, know the Lord, know that he's faithful, know that he answers the sincere prayer and it's a guarantee. But what I didn't know was that once you receive your salvation it can never be lost and I was sifted and overturned and beaten up. And so like all, all believers we go through as it says in First Peter, we go through that fiery trial. So if you're having a fiery trial, I'm just going to try and share some things to reassure you that you may be um, armed, armed to the teeth in your salvation and uh, your faith, your helmet of salvation, your shield of faith and, and the sword of truth. Those three things, trusting in God, 
solely, not not in what men teach, not in what believers teach, uh, but trusting those who teach what is true. So you can measure by the sword, by the word, those who, who uh, teach error. And by the Holy Spirit's discernment, you can tell their motives. You can tell if they're genuine. And you can see that, that there are many uh, saved Christians who go astray. And, and we're, all, we're all sinners, we're, we've all got the flesh, and the devil can sift people, especially people left to themselves, uh, people who um, go their own way. We, it's all natural to go our own ways. It's like, uh, like Israel, they backslid and went, their own, went about their own business. So it's a very fine line. It, uh, the gospel and if you're a believer who you started off and, and you fear God and you really want to shine and you really want to be a soul winner you really want to love the Lord and express that but you've come up against this absolute wall of, of a nightmare I, um, I want to share some things to equip you so it's, yeah the three main things for the believer is, is to know your eternal security, to have a faithful testimony that the, the, the word of God is, is totally reliable and trustworthy. And your faith, your daily faith, your uh, now you're saved, you're justified, all your past, present and sins are forgiven. But you don't live for sin, you live for, you live for the... You, you seek to live in the spirit, you live for for Christ and his um, salvation unto good works, so not not to uh, keep commandments of men and be a do-gooder, but to to live good, to live by the spirit and to uh, grow in the word, share the gospel and do good to, to all men that when it's uh, in your way to do so, not to go out of your way to be a do-gooder, but to um, serve in your liberty and do good to those who uh, the Lord will put in your way, that you come across in your life, that on your walk, on in your liberty. And living daily by faith, we are sanctified so we are complete we are fully complete in in our salvation what the Lord's done for us but um, we're, we're growing we're not uh, perfect I, I personally don't understand every single passage of scripture I'm still a, a child I'm still learning and I'm still growing and I'm still being corrected so it's not to trust a uh, Trust, trust men, not to trust me, but to trust the truth, to trust the Holy Spirit, and to trust the Word of God, and to to know that the Lord is trustworthy. He's consistently faithful, loving. His ways are higher than our ways, and it's so easy to lose sight of of the gospel and of our salvation and what we should be doing. <laughs> and as the Scriptures teach, if your eyes not single to the glory. Your whole, your whole life is full of darkness. So it's to remember those uh, simple lessons uh, and what what the scripture teaches to put on our helmet helmet of salvation, to be thankful and to rejoice in, and and I gained a testimony of that by the Spirit, but n n not by the Word. I had to um, st uh, study the Word, study and study and study. And it took me a long time because I have learning disabilities. It, it was a struggle. And reading and studying is a chore for any, any person. But particularly for myself, it was more hard going. So the Lord was more patient for my need. And that, that's a point I'd like to express. We've all got different needs. We've all got different... Um, uh, we come from different backgrounds. Uh, if you've come from a abusive broken background a fatherless background you're going to need that extra bit of love and attention and grace from the Lord as I received and um, the Lord's been 
I've almost got away with murder that other other brothers would not not have got away with. But that doesn't give me a license to go and sin willfully. Now, sinning willfully, we all we any sin is willful because we we know the truth. But to sin willfully is to live deliberately after sin, like the Corinthians saints. So you can either be too too hardened and um, stiff necked and right self righteous, like holier than thou. Um, or you can go the other extreme, which is that you can do what you like in your liberty. Um, we, you can't lose your li use your liberty to sin, to live after the flesh, to live after the world. But you, that doesn't negate that you may have a fleshy weakness, and that when like, like I can cuss, and, and um, the Lord says uh, he is without sin let him cast the first stone and uh, who says they have no sin calls God a liar and that's talking to believers we're all sinners so we can sin and when we sin by not by living going oh it doesn't matter what I do or therefore I'll go out and do what I like and that's willful sinning that's willfully believing you can do what you like but when you're living for the Lord and you make a mistake and you willfully sin in that regard, that's when you need to confess your sin, and the Lord is faithful to restore you, because he's forgiven you of all your past, present and future sins. Um, so there is a difference f through uh, willful sinning, and just sinning willfully by your mistakes, or taking your eye off the ball, or, or weakness, or an affliction. I want to share this... Um, poem I wrote when I was a baby in Christ uh, I, I called it Chasing Shadows There are many children playing when a great new game was called upon the, t the children stood still listening expectantly as they shone The new game's called Chasing Shadows and the children squealed with glee crashing into everything as they run around merrily they try to catch their shadows, running around so gingerly, when one child called for silence and said, Please will you listen to me? If you want to catch your shadow, for I've worked out the drill, just be absolutely silent and stand absolutely still. So praise God that the Lord was... Before I, I knew the word, he was, he was teaching me of my salvation and to rest to stand still, to stand firm in what the Lord Jesus Christ had done for me. He'd saved me and placed me on this rock, and I was saved. And to continue in that daily without leaving that uh, behind or casting that aside or being overtaken or tripped up by um, these so-called teachers, experts, who will throw, throw things in your path and trip you up and um, affect your conscience, affect your walk. Like, oh, the scriptures aren't true, they're not reliable, or, oh, there's no such thing as the Trinity. Um, that really gets me, the Trinity denies, and then they come out with um, all, all their reasons and all their... all, all, all their uh, interpretation. Oh, I heard a... I caught a video today and oh, the Lord spoke to me and told me about the Trinity, that it's um, not true, blah, 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 blah. I've heard so many, oh, the Lord's told me, oh, I prayed and the Lord told me the rapture's not true. Well, I'm not going to tell you what's true and what's not true. I personally have a testimony of the Trinity and the faithful word, so I don't need any other man to teach me. Um, and, and I would just invite you to be the same, not to trust anybody but, but the Lord, to cry upon the Lord, to put all your cares upon the Lord. And he will faithfully lead you and he will faithfully uh, guide you. I'm going to read uh, some scriptures. And consider when, when, when you first... Uh, 
get saved and, and you can hear all these rallying calls um, uh, you know you've got to do this you've got to do that and, and, and partly it's true you know um, we're all called the Great Commission we're all we're all called to share the gospel because of salvation of souls solely he who win his souls is wise uh, and that's the, really the remit for every believer but everybody's got a different responsibility, a different life. So everyone has to work out and find find their footing and grow in the word before they know in their liberty where where they they are best placed served, where where the Lord will have them serving in his a full ordination, what what that person's been called to do within that remit. So you may not be um called to be a preacher, a street minister or a leader, you may just be um, posting tracks or standing and going through your life giving testimony when it's in your way to do so and sharing the gospel in, in your remit. Um, everyone needs to uh, work that out themselves, it's not something I can point out to you but um, I remember an, an experience, and um, there was these travellers. Now, there's when I say travellers, you may you may conjure up gypsies, or you may come conjure up these tree hugging sort of people. But these were a humble, clean, respectful people who were were just travelling and camped out in common ground. They weren't dirty, they didn't leave rubbish, they weren't drug dealers, they weren't criminals, they were humble people who who travelled and were sort of kicked out of society in, in, in a sense. And then you have these other tra travellers that used to um, camp up, leave loads of litter around, deal drugs, let their dogs roam around and... Uh, so there's a different image of what a traveller is, but these travellers were travellers in a, a humble sense and a, a well-behaved sense. And other travellers would give them a bad name. So there was a, um, you know, they would they would get tarred with that brush and they would be persecuted by the police and moved on and harassed and people would fear them and. Uh, so these people just spat out of society, come from broken, troubled lives. As, as do many other travellers, but a lot of these tree-huggling travellers all come from rich families. And it's all about image. And so I'm trying to share a contrast in uh, trying to be something you're not and appearing as you're something that you're not. And that's that's like the Christian body in a in a sense that there's people who don't do things um, earnestly and uh, soberly for the right reasons. They charge ahead and, and go their own way. Um, and these people were sincere and then they, they would always attract the other kind of traveller who were wild, dirty, um, sometimes uh, lawless criminals. And, and you, you, the two didn't mix, uh, you, the, so bear that in mind. Um, turn to First Corinthians, chapter eleven. <coughs> For there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be manifest among you. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. So, verse 19, there must be also heresies among you, that they may they which are approved may be manifest among you. So that's something you have to measure yourself, you have to study it out, be a Berean. 
that you may know from those from the word who are approved in the body and those who are not approved in the body and uh, or those who are sharing a an error or something incorrect a heresy which is other than what the Lord's revealed uh, for instance that the Trinity doesn't exist or you can lose your salvation these are heresies these are not right and these can trip you up so the Lord uh, Paul said for there must be also heresies among you that they which are approved may be manifest among you so once you measure them you can find out yourself well who's approved and who's not approved and, and if you think of Paul when he was saved he didn't go out and instantly start preaching he took himself aside he didn't run before he could walk so you can get people rallying you to do things before you're ready without really considering your uh, your need fully and you can be beaten up and thrown out to work before you're, you're quite equipped, you're quite ready although you're fully equipped but you have to um, be a stab you have to be established you have, the Lord has to build you up and before you can act in his name because if you go out trying too hard to do something you you're going to trip up you're going to fall over so it's important to rest in your salvation grow in the word before you're confident and the lord that's the lord's business that's the lord's doing he will he will take care of that but you can quench you can go ahead of yourself and quench the holy spirit and that will stunt your growth that will damn your damn your testimony and development and that's what happened to me from the beginning and my, my testimony was severely damaged and it took me but uh, praise God I think that's for a wise reason so I could have a heart for people going through the same thing and I can c come back down the line and say yeah I know what you're going through you know um, this is my experience, so, you know, I'm trying to give people the heads up, or trying to pull the branch out of the way for people, so it doesn't, for people to get smacked in the face, and, um, I'll turn to scripture, in Isaiah, just to consider the heart of the shepherd, for those, those big, big leaders, those who are called to lead, are they, and those who are struggling behind at the back, you know, the lame and the weak, and the uh, people with a greater need in the body, um, I'll read First Corinthians in a minute, chapter 12, I want to share Isaiah, scripture from Isaiah, which is a wonderful insight into the Lord's heart, um, Isaiah 52, verse 12, uh, read 11 and 12, Isaiah 52, verse 11, Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from thence, touch no unclean thing, go ye out of the midst of her. So you could liken that to Second Corinthians six, uh, uh, keeping not having fellowship with uh, unbelievers in the world. Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. So trust in the Lord and live daily by faith in your salvation and live 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 a live a good life. Live to. Grow for grow in the word to um, stay stay uh, stay good. For you shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight. For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your reward. So the Lord's at the front and he's at the back and he's all in all. He's, he, he completely comprehends the whole needs of every individual in a line. If you think of um, the children of Israel, the armies of Israel, Dan was the rear guard. He was the rear guard action force that would, when, when the battle's in, it, 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 taking its uh, momentum, 
and they're gaining an advantage over the enemy, the rear guard will come up, break through the flanks and just chew into the remaining uh, armies. Um, that's what a rear guard is, it's a rear guard action force. It, it, it comes up and puts that extra weight behind the main force. So the Lord is that rear guard. Now if you think of a queue of people walking on a, a long journey, and if the person at the front's running ahead too far and he's not considering those struggling behind, uh, that, that, that happened in Israel, you know, the people were, oh look at me, look at me, and um, they forgot the weak people, and there's a, there's a breach that happened in, in, in the queue. And the, and the little, just the weak and feeble and the tired and the, the old, you know, people that would be old would be struggling they would, to keep up the pace. So they'd get left behind. That's what happened to Diane in the sense. And they, and uh, I think it was the Am Amicalites, the Am Amalek, come up and chewed up, chewed up the um, people of Israel and absolutely destroyed them, lots of people. And that can happen in the Christian body. So the Lord is mindful of every, every need, especially the weak and the feeble and those who are struggling, um, you know, the fatherless and the poor and the afflicted. Whereas those who are out for themselves have completely got their eye off um, those needs and those people are cast aside. And you, you may be in that camp, you may feel like that, and you know, there's very few brothers, there's very few uh, ministries that do have a heart for the weak and the feeble, and you, you know, they, they will be hard pressed to find, hard pressed to search out in this, amongst all the other trash and uh, heresy and apostasy in our world today. So you have to um, measure and study and trust in the Lord. And if you are poorly and feeble, is and you've just been saved, is to uh, take your time before you are um, ready to to move. Let the Lord move you. Let the Lord establish you. Let the Lord build you till you're confident. That doesn't mean you can't go out and share the gospel. Um, but if you're more prepared and strengthened, you'll be more emboldened and you'll be more fearless because there'll be things that will come and trip you up and you won't have an answer. Um, sometimes it's best if you don't know the answer, it's just to say you don't know the answer to that and can I have your name and address and I'll get back to you or, or that sort of thing and, or I'll go and ask my brother and study it out and I'll... I'll reply that currently I'm learning. I don't know that, and that will give you confidence. And then you will go and search it out because you'll want to know. You want to know the answer, so you can answer every matter. Uh, but answering every matter doesn't mean you know everything. You know of everything, um, and you can go and get the answer. It doesn't mean that you um, know everything in the in the Holy Bible. It takes. It's a life lifetime study and it's a constant renewing of that which you have studied to keep it fresh. I've got a terrible memory. But the Lord works around that in 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 a in a way where I know where to where roughly where it was and I can go and search it out. But recalling uh, scriptures word for word is just not something I can do. And that and that hit my confidence because I thought, Oh, I, I can't recall the scriptures. Well I well, the Lord doesn't expect me to recall every scripture word for word, but um, he can show me where it is and I can look it up and share what the word says. All right, Isaiah 58, verse 8. Uh, 58. Then shall they break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily. And thy righteousness shall go before thee, and the glory of God shall be thy reward. So I promise to uh, the believer that the 
the light will go before you. The light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. And the glory of the Lord shall be your reward. So the Lord will be before you and behind you and um, considerate of all your needs. He is considerate of all your needs. Uh, go to Galatians 5. Let's go to First Peter first. Okay. And read. for the young brother or sister who may be a bit disheartened and may, may be like throwing the towel in um, the Lord understands how you feel um, it's not to beat you up and be disheartened because then sin, sin is at the door it's to to look to call, to cry out to the Lord and, and uh, seek him to build you up and complete you in that moment you put your trust in him every day so whatever problem you have you take it to the Lord he will be there to meet you but if you give up heart and then you don't do that you're, you're growing out of sync more and more and more and more each day and you'll get more disheartened you'll get more despondent and then the devil will be all over you um, right first Peter chapter 1 Peter an apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus Galatia Cappadocia Asia and Bithynia, and Bithynia elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. Blessed be God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. And like I say, it, it, it can diminish if you're not uh, diligent and uh, obedient. And if you don't know, you haven't grown in the word, you, you, will, you can stray from your obedience, from your heart and, and, your, and that lively hope and that blessing you've been given. And that can diminish, your flame can become weak and weak. And if you don't nourish that, it will... There is a danger of it diminishing and then you'll fall into error, you'll fall into sin or despondency or you'll be overtaken by um, seducing spirits. There's so many diverse ways you can be caught out because Satan is uh, there waiting to have you over. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and, fade, and fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. So the promise is you're kept by the power of God through faith. So you appropriate the Lord's atonement by faith. You're kept, even if you weren't to be faithful after that, you're kept. Not, I'm not saying to do that, and it's, it's good. But you are kept, ready to be revealed in the last time when the Lord appears. Wherein you greatly rejoice, through, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness, through manifold temptations, because you've hit, you've been saved, and now you're going, you're looking back out into the world, and you're, and you're, you're surrounded. You, you may be, you need, if need be, you're in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and unknown and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So a trial of your faith, um, whom having not seen ye love, in whom though now ye seen, see him not, yet believe in ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, 
receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. So there's a, a trial, a trial of faith, a fiery trial. Um, it was at the scripture I wanted, but that covers the uh, the area I wanted. Um, let's look at another scripture. Uh, let's go Galatians 4. So you will you will be um, buffeted. You will be have trials. You will have tribulations. Even when you're doing right, even when you're doing everything right, you will have those moments. You will have those clouds that could pass over your head and the Lord will you will be tried tried through that your faith will be tried to to see if you remain faithful each day because we live daily by faith in that which we've received at the beginning of our first love and if you're a believer and you can get that down and you can hold hold on to that immediately and grow in that, grow in your salvation, to know you're saved, to know the Lord's faithful and you can put all your cares upon your Heavenly Father, trust in the Lord daily, that will keep you in good stead, like it says if you teach a child in the way early, it's more likely to stay in the way, but if there's not, no one there teaching you for you, you're more likely to get despondent, you're more likely to fall away, you're more likely to have more buffetings. And you'll miss out, you'll miss out um, your salvation, your walk, and what the Lord desires for you to do for him, to um, grow forward and bring forth fruit and abound in, in what his purpose is for us. Um, Galatians 4 and because you are sons God has sent forth the spirit of his son into into your hearts crying over father therefore thou art no more a servant but a son and if a son then an heir of God through Christ um, so our spirits are cry over father we, we have a father that is uh, we cry out to and the Lord is faithful to um, answer and meet the need of our spirits whenever we call, whenever we cry out. Now our hearts are always crying out. The spirits always interceding with our spirits, um, our spirits uttering. Um, but sometimes we, our minds need to catch up with our spirits because we can take our eye off our spirits. The spirit's willing, the flesh is weak. So uh, praying always, we're always praying always in the spirit, but we need to keep our mind focused on that, otherwise we take our mind off it and our flesh, which our flesh won't be praying, but our spirits will be crying out, my, my flesh is abandoning me, it's not do, I'm not doing, and the Holy Spirit say, well you're not doing what you should be doing, you're transgressing, and then that will vex your spirit, and that will vex the Holy Spirit, and you'll quench your quench the Lord and I know I've, I've done that m much in my walk um, but now after that you have known God, God or rather are known of God how turn you again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto you desire again to be in bondage so you can fall away you can return to your old ways you observe days and months and times and years so like the Galatians they, they return to traditions and uh uh, keeping commandments and uh, forsook that first love, that uh, chasing after their shadow. So we we, we have the Lord. Uh, Ephesians, let's go to Ephesians 4. I remember at uh, least uh, some travellers. Uh, um, used to come round to 
my parents' house when I was a young man. And I used to knock on the door and politely ask for some water. And I used to carry it back to where they were camped down this old country lane. And then after, there was only two or three of them. They were very meek people, you know, lovely people. And then all these other travellers turned up and camped just up the road from him and it brought in a load of trouble. And then one day, they were, they were all squashed together in this little area, they'd all thrown their rubbish out on the floor. They were all too close to one another, they had gas bottles, some of them had children. And they are all blocked out their windows and they are all doing drugs in the day and the parties at night and they, they were just like uh, rebellious. And then these travellers were camped up the road from these uh, wilder ones and they were on the side debate, you know, thinking, oh, we want to get away from this and uh, deciding to move on. And then then someone come running up, up the lane screaming and, oh, there, there's a caravan on fire. And we run, all of us run down to help and... <laughs> It, I'm not, it's not funny, but it's just the way this guy was totally, he was desperately trying to pull a caravan away from these gas, his caravan was on fire. And thank, thank the Lord, no one was hurt. But they were all so close together, it, it, um, a lot of the building, a lot of their homes were lost. But he was t uh, towing a rope on the caravan trailer and dragging it, he couldn't do it on his own and he's trying to drag it away from the gas bottles and he shouts, all hands on deck and uh, and everyone in that camp that was just standing around watch gazing in uh, awe you know, shock, jumped and all run to the rope and pulled this burning torch away from these gas bottles, all these stacked up gas bottles, Carla gas bottles, which would have caused an explosion. And and so the, the damage was, uh, it was a damage limitation exercise because a lot of the, uh, some other things caught fire because all their rubbish and so that, that was quite a stark lesson for me and I remember that uh, fondly although it was very serious and worrying at the time, but it was it, the call, all hands on deck, and everyone, I was really impressed by that, how his assertiveness, he was just like grabbing the rope, and, and it's kind of like the gospel, it is all hands on deck, it's all hands on the wheel, um, everyone's got a responsibility to share the gospel, but when 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 you uh, are first Christian and you see all this uh, heresy and apostasy, it can be very off-putting and it can uh, trip your faith up and you, it can um, hedge up the way and you you may not you may start you may turn aside and get despondent. So I don't I want to encourage people not to be despondent by by what others do and what the example of the world is, but to trust in the Lord to guide your footsteps into um, that joy of service because sharing, there's nothing like sharing your testimony. Even posting tracks through the door can be a, a wonderful, a wonderful, joyous experience because you're going out personally in the Lord's vineyard you're serving the Father, you're serving the Lord, and you're administering, and you feel like so blessed to do it. And you don't want to be robbed of those experiences because other people's bad experiences and bad examples, you don't want to let these people put you off at all. You, know, you want to trust the Lord in your heart for Him to help you grow and discover what you can do if you're a sister or a brother, what you can do for the Lord and what you should be doing for the Lord. And I read um, Ephesians 4. Uh, this is Paul. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called, 
with all lowliness and meekness and long suffering, forbearing one another in love. So you, you have to be loving and for, forbearing, long suffering. You have to take the knocks on the chin. You have to. You have to be forgiving, and you have to be patient. Endeavouring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace and not to get fleshy and react and get into fights and tangles with people. Um, it's really wise just to share the word and if there's if people don't want it and they reject it, it's just to pass by and carry on to the next person and the next person. And that's the wisdom that I've had many brothers share with me in my testimony, in my walk, you know, share the gospel, plant the seed and move on. Don't stand around debating, because the, cause the truth is people don't, they're not arguing to be edified, they're arguing because they don't believe. So, the, you, you, like the Lord says, that he's the real Lord, you know, you, the Lord will judge people. The Lord will judge these heretics, the Lord will deal with them. And, so, and if you're not uh, strong enough to go and tackle them, well, give them a wide berth, the Lord, the Lord will do it, and, and somebody else will... Um, address it and contend for the faith um, and a lot of people have been con contended already but they've uh, re they've rejected because they're, 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 they're just going to stick to what they believe and carry on hardened in their belief teaching heresy so the Lord will judge those people and they will suffer loss people if you're in error you're going to suffer loss at the in the in the judgment in the um, for the saints when the Lord judges the saints and measures what they've done after they've been saved and a lot of people will it'll be burnt in the fire all our works will be burnt in the fire to see if they were right and those people will will look, could lose everything and they'll have nothing. It's better if you're not if you're not able to do much. It's better to do something that is right for a reward rather than follow an error and get nothing to get get your works burnt and all that you're left with is your salvation. Endeavouring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and one Father of all who is above all. And through all and in you all. Uh, Col Col Colossians chapter 2, you are complete in him, in, in Jesus Christ. So as a member part, you're, a full, you're fully as Christ by his grace. You are full, you're a full part of his body. Although you're in the body, you're a member part in that body, you're completed by him fully. So there's no one bigger than you, no one better than you. There may be someone more experienced with you and more responsibility, but you are a complete body. Uh, you are completed by the Lord's full body. So you are as he is by his grace, not by your your efforts, but by his grace. He completes all of us, no matter he'll reach wherever you are daily. When you first believed and on a daily basis, you are that complete person in Christ. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through, through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, um, transfiguration, and um, he was witnessed of his glory, he was, uh, this is my beloved son, hear ye him. He led captivity captive and gave goods unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? So before before he went into the grave, he, he was in uh, Gethsemane and he suffered all the sins, he suffered all the pain and drank all the dregs. So he descended below all. And then, then he was crucified and then he went into the grave victorious. Now he, that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same, also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all in, in that he might fill all things. So 
the Lord knows every every single need of every single believer. If past, all the saints in in the past and all the all, all the saints in the future, and He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the per perfecting of the saints, for the growing of the saints, for the edification of the saints, for the work of the ministry. So uh, to equip people, to build people up, to to minister for the edifying of the body of Christ, for the bringing all into that unity. So we'll all come in the, in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. This is what, what Paul's um, leading to for the member, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the slay of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. A lot of these ministries are deliberately spies, and they set up and imitate Christians. Uh, not all of them, some of them are just, uh, in error, apostatized. They are safe, but they stray. But there's a lot of counterfeit. So you can be tossed around by professing believers claiming to be a pastor or claiming to be an elder you have to really measure that which is heresy that which is approved uh, by your own testimony by your own trust in the lord your own faith in in the word and in the in, in the lord and if you if you know you're saved and you know these things you will you will, won't go far wrong uh, this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not, not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. You being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanliness for greediness, but ye, are not so, but ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteous, righteousness and true holiness, wherefore putting away lying, speak, it, speak every man truth with his neighbour, for we are members we are members one of another. Be ye angry, and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that style steal, steal no more. But rather let him labour, working with his hands, the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good in, to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of your redemption. So you're saved unto the day of your redemption. You can grieve the Holy Spirit, and you can go astray and become hardened, and then you, you'll be stuck, and you're less likely to ever, ever get back to get on track. So if you've got a heart for the Lord Jesus, um and read read your scriptures daily be obedient to the first faith believe that you are saved you are complete be thankful and rejoice and allow the lord to grow to grow you in the world um i think that it's a good if you're a new believer it's a good exercise to read the Epistles of First Peter, First John, because these these are really milk. These are really prepare you. Uh, the, these these brethren really were like pastors unto the whole church body, and they are they are our pastors still today in spirit, because we have the word. And also to read all the epistles, but read. Read the whole book in one go, because uh, that that can give you the full contents, the full measure of 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 the, of, of the circumstance, who who it's for, who it's for the church, but but the circumstances of that 
particular body that it was rich and see which fits, which cap fits and which cap doesn't fit you and study these things out but reading the scriptures is a vital thing to be renewed in your mind and I'm guilty of slipping um, you know like I become weak and undisciplined so I'm um, being built up in that discipline that if I don't do that I'm going to suffer and I don't want to suffer and I don't want to miss out I don't want to miss out on the blessings having had a, such a poorly start and I certainly don't want any of my brothers and sisters to uh, be cut off and kept out of out of the blessings of uh, service um, I'd like to encourage people to, to you know seek to serve the Lord and share your testimony in whatever way the, in your liberty that you, you you desire and that the Lord leads you to in your heart fear not to do good and share the gospel with gospel tracts or look for ideas and uh, allow the Lord to lead you in your gift and talent where you can reach people and share his word and he will use you to, to uh, his glory to his blessing um, let's read there, Galatians 5 and be careful not to get caught up in when 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 I first got the internet I was so put off by all the bickering all the screaming and all the all the different ministries that were the ecumenical, the apostate, the false, the tares, the goats, all mixed in with the corruption that has crept into the body of Christ. And it took me a long, I pray to the Lord, Lord, just lead me, just help me find that which, you know, sober brothers, help me find sober ministries, and, and there behold, I found them. And then I found others and I thought, oh, they were sober, but they weren't. And they were teaching um, heresy. And uh, it built me, it gave me that experience to be confident and to measure that which is um, of, of the Lord and that which isn't. And that's the same for any any child of God, that, that the Lord will lead them when they put their trust in him. He will guide their footsteps. He will uphold them, he will keep them secure, and if you allow the Lord, he will do that which he's promised. But if you stop the Lord, you will be damned, you will go stagnant, and you will be unhappy, and you will lose that um, joy and those blessings. So Galatians 5. Stand first therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. So if you try and, um, if you try and do the good works, if you try and do all the stuff, you try to do it off your own back to do it, to gratify your own righteousness, uh, Christ shall profit you nothing. If I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that uh, he is a debtor to the whole law. Christ has become of no effect unto you, but whosoever of you are justified by the law, you have fallen from grace. So you don't try and do good works to show that you're a, a good person, you are justified by grace, and then the grace moves you on to, to focus your good works in truth, in spirit and in truth. And uh, that, that's the aim. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. So the law is uh, uh, completed by Jesus, and we establish the law by, by love. So loving our brothers, loving our neighbours as ourselves. Not mixing with them and being wishy-washy, but warning them about the gospel. That's the, loving, the most loving thing you can do. You did wrong well, who did hinder you, that you should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you, a little leaven leaveth the leaven if the whole lump. So any if you're following after 
a lever and it's going to, everyone that's following that, it's going to condemn like down the whole lump, it's going to leave and puff up the whole lump and they're going to go and be a bad example that's going to rub off on those and they're going to be following after that and then they're going to uh, give the Lord a bad reputation in the gospel and that's going to undermine what other, all, all the faithful people are doing, all the faithful brethren are doing so it will annoy them, it will vex them it will um, cause them offence I have confidence in you through the Lord and uh, you know I've been guilty of being leavened and following after error and gone astray many times so I'm not I'm not holier than thou I have confidence in you through the Lord that you will be none otherwise minded but that he, but he that troubleth you you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be and I brethren if I yet preach circumcision what do I suffer why do I yet suffer persecution and is the offence of the cross ceased I would that you were cut off, were even cut off, which uh, I would they were even cut off, which trouble you. Uh, for brethren, ye have been called into liberty. Only like, only use not liberty for occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. So you could use your, you can use your liberty to go and be dirty or vengeful or or proud, or whatever, all the fruits of the flesh. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. Because uh, the, the flesh is contentious, and it can draw you out into bickering and fighting and envy and all the lusts of the flesh. Uh, this I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfil the lust of the flesh. There it is, a very simple walk in the spirit and that will keep you from the flesh. So you put your put the Lord first every day, put your renew your mind every day, put on your helmet of salvation and rest in your salvation every day by, by faith. And pick up you know, gird up your loins and pick up the sword, the word, and your shield of faith every day. For the flesh lust, lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye are led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the, of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, and cleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. So all those things, if you're not living for the Lord and the Spirit, you're going to be caught out by one of those, by the fruits of the, uh, of the flesh. And I get caught out by wrath. Um, even when I'm living for the Spirit, I can momentarily get get knocked over, tripped up and I uh, have to confess that and uh, pray the Lord to restore me back to the spirit. Envious murders, drunkenness, revelings and such like of which things I tell you before and I have as I also told you in times past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So if you, you if you finish your salvation and you're not and you're not living for the spirit, you're not going to enter in to, you're not going to be part of the Lord's kingdom in the millennium. And you will be kept out, you will be, it, you will be with the Father, you are in heaven, you will not be, you'll be missing out on that um, millennial rule that the Lord's uh, promised to the faithful who finish, who who continue in the spirit and in, in the, in the, in the finish the course. But the, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections of the lust. 
So everyone that's Christ has crucified the flesh so with but that's uh, not not a guarantee to just remain we're not sustained just because we're we're saved. We have to live sustain that by our faith and renewing our mind and then walking in that spirit daily. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Well, I'm going to have a pause. Okay, part two of my brothers and sisters. Um, especially those who are weak in confidence or afflicted or buffeted. Uh, let's go to Corinthians, Galatians 6. Uh, this is to the brethren. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, be ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. A semicolon. Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. So, consider consider that verse. Um, somebody who's strong and sees somebody in a fault, but to be cautious, consider thyself, lest thou also be tempted. So consider if um, you're able to actually do anything to reach that person to before you attempt to restore one who's opposing themselves or, or struggling with an area you can see that they are in error. Considering thyself, lest thou all should be attempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so and so fulfil the law of Christ. Verse three. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. So you've got to be careful not to be big-headed and think, well, I can go and fix everything. I am so spiritual that I, you know, I can go and put you right. You've got to be humble and you've got to be realistic with what you can actually do. But let every man prove his own work, let, but let every man prove his own work and then let him have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man should bear his own burden. So our own, our, our own burdens are our own, but we do suffer one another. We we have compassion for each other's burdens and by doing what we should do we will be burdening um, every other's burden to reach out to people that we can reach out to but if we are unconfident or not strong enough we should um, not go out of our remit not go out of beyond what we are capable of of doing realistically. Um, you can always go and uh, you can pray and ask, for, and, and ask for the Holy Spirit, the Lord, to uh, intercede. And um, do that which you cannot do for yourself. And to um, consider your own your own standing to so it doesn't affect your work and your and you get tempted and caught into um, a punch up or someone will trash you with their bully, you know they will bully you like a ball and barge you with their horns um, <clears throat> so you've got to be careful not to do that which you're <coughs> unable to do I remember having to witness again, um, I discovered this ministry and he was leading many people astray and he was uh, well versed in the scripture and it, after uh, going back and forth and doing, doing everything I thought was right <clears throat> and rejecting him for, you know, after two admonitions and then rejecting him yeah, he came, he wouldn't let go, and uh, I, it took me a year, really, to, because he was throwing things in that I wasn't strong in, and I, I, I was rep um, rep 
be a buffer in it. I should have just ignored it, ignored, ignored him, but I was, I was concerned for a song, so my my kind of heart ran after him when, when it shouldn't have done. I'd done the right thing and should have left it, but he was um, taking a lot of money out of people. And then I did, on the second round, I thought, all right, I'm going to repeat what I'd done, and then I'm going to nail it. And, I, and praise the Lord, I, the Lord had, I studied out the scriptures and discovered, called him out, because he was a, a Jew, and he had, uh, he'd, he'd come in privately, acting as a mess messianic minister, and then twisting the scriptures and, and leading a load of Christians off, so I was able to call him out, testify, and then ignore him. But that, took, that was an experience for me, but that experience built, built me confidence. And um, another, another, another thing is um, mixing with the world. Um, I read Second Corinthians because you can, if you're if you're in a group of body of people and you're not given a witness, if you if you have um, people around your home and not believers, perhaps family, and they're you have to consider that they've rejected your Lord, they've rejected your Father. And if, you're, if you contend for the faith and they know where you stand, um, you, you know, some people can um, live with their family and uh, visit their family and have their family visit. But if you're to spend, if you're to hang out with people all the time, you, you it's your responsibility to correct everything that they uh, contend for the faith every, every every time they open their mouth and and then you're going to get vexed you're going to get um, it's going to be too much to bear because you're always going to be contending they're always going to be rejecting and it's going to vex the Holy Spirit so you have to separate you have to separate um, when I was saved I, I couldn't go in the public building, I couldn't go into a public house or a pub, um, it would vex me, it would it would um, quench the spirit, it affects my spirit. And um, m many times my parents would, uh, on, their, on a birthday or, or even my birthday, they'd offer to take me, take me out for a meal or they'd go out for a meal. And at a time, at, I, I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it, and I used to get upset by it and say, Look, I'm sorry, I can't. But um, thankfully, they were very understanding. They didn't, they weren't, they weren't put out by it. Which is a good sign. Um, Second Corinthians, uh, first, is it? Chapter 6, was it First Corinthians? When we then as workers together with you, beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in the time accepted, and in the day of salvation of our succour thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So our salvation is secure, it's eternal, and it's now. It's the time, the, the day that you appropriated the Lord's atonement. is the eternal day you were saved on. So we're all saved on in a spiritual sense, on that same day that Jesus uh, received the victory. We're all saved, we're all grafted into that day, That's and now, because God's eternal, there is no, no um, time like there is in earth, it's always constant. God is eternally true and, and single and uh, consistently um, eternal forever, and now, it's a day of salvation, giving no offence in anything, that the ministry be not blamed. But in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God, in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities and distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in turmoils, in labours, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long-suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the arm of righteousness, on the right hand and on the left, by honour and dishonour, by evil report and good report, as, 
as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed, corrected, <coughs> as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. So there's a, the flesh and the spirit in, in synchronised, um, superimposed together. Um, o Corinthians, our mouth is opened unto you, our heart is enlarged, you are not straightened in us, but you are straightened in your own bowels. Now for the recompense in the saying, I speak as unto, unto my children, be ye also enlarged. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion have light with darkness, and what concord have Christ with Belial, or what part have he that believeth with an infidel, what agreement have the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them, and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. So, for the believer, <coughs> you can't fellowship with um, unbelievers, they don't mix. Don't our old our flesh doesn't mix with our, our the Holy Spirit the Spirit that we have in given um, that the Lord's purchased and we remain <coughs> with that shadow um, and if we're living for the Spirit we are standing on that shadow we have overcome our flesh by the grace of God through faith. Um, our, it concerns me because I see lo lots of uh, ministries who um, mingle with uh, unbelievers, and I, I, I can't get quite get my head around it how they they do that without a problem. And I don't want to say they're not saved. Um, I'm a, I remember meeting a friend, and I shared my testimony. And he said, oh, "I'm a Christian." And, do you want to come in the pub for a drink? And I thought, I, I, I can't. I, and so I had to witness, you know, and uh, without, I didn't want to get into a fight or any contention. And I, and <clears throat> I said, no, I can't, you know, I don't drink. I don't, I, you know, I can't, I don't believe it. I haven't been in a, a bar since I have. Well, that's not true, I have, but I mean, it's not, not something I, I can do or, or would do. And so I refused and gave my testimony and wondered about it, thought, well, how, how, how can a believer not experience the same experience as I, I, I would have? I would, you know, I would offend the Lord, I wouldn't want to do that, so I passed. And um, I have a heart for people um, that are targeted as well. And, then, and the rally is that we all need to come together and... It's all it's all the flesh and uh, and I and I and I wrestle and I think well I should should I support people well, and I think well no because then I forsake Christ if uh, if I was to mix with groups that uh, have a similar cause and not put aside the gospel I would be guilty of offending the Lord and turn into the flesh putting putting what the, these groups think is right above what the Lord has taught and uh, I see many ministries who mingle with, with uh, unsafe people now um, I'm sure there's a fine line to do that but how, how can you um, deny the Lord it's um, if you liken it unto your, your, your you let, say you live with your grandfather and your, your father had uh, gave his life up to save a group of friends but they did they all rejected and, and your father died anyway so in their case it was vain 
And then they say, oh, do you want to come out with us, you know? And you say, well, you ca I can't. You deny my father. You don't love me. He, he died for you. You don't, uh, you don't want to know him. So why are you asking me to come out and join you? What they, what, what they would be doing is trying to get you to deny the love of your own father so you wouldn't have anything to do with them until they repented and said, look, we're sorry about, about your father dying. We're really sorry and we, you know, we accept what he did for us was to save us, was to rescue us from ourselves. So that would deny your grandfather, your father and yourself. So if you were to go out and mix with these people without, and they were unrepentant, you would be dishonouring, dishonouring your own father and your own grandfather and you'd hurt your own family. And that's why... Um, the Gospel, that's like Heavenly Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, if you aren't speaking out against wickedness and unbelief, you are just as, as guilty as those who hold to unbelief. They don't want to know, so they remain in their under condemnation. Um, whatever the cause is, whether it's a good cause or not, it's the best cause and only cause is um, the winning of souls. Um, so this outreach really has been for any, any believer who's struggling and come up against all this uh, in the world, just to take heart and to trust in, trust in the Lord, trust in growing the Word that he may establish you and to study out and measure and not lose your confidence, not lose your, not be put off or not back by you and to know, to have a, a testimony that the Lord will, is with you every moment, every day and he's, you have that continual access to his spirit and his grace through faith um, on a day to day basis in your sanctification as you live by faith. And if you are mixing with um, unbelievers, and I'm not talking so much about personal family members, I'm talking about groups of associating with old sort of old friends <coughs> who don't want to know Christ, but they uh, you they may they won't comprehend the change you've had in your life, and you will have to separate from these people if you were. Uh, uh, socialising with these people one minute and then you're saved you can't really return back to your old your old ways, your old life because it will vex the Holy Spirit and there's a lot of ministries that um, reach out to these people but they're not they um, compromise and they are not doing those people a service they are pleasing the man other than fearing God and being uh, a testimony of the gospel. And you can't really do both. You can't please man and, and God. You have to rebuke and stand for, and contend for the faith, repent, repentance. People don't like being told to repent. And they will hate you and they will bear grudge. They might show to your face that they understand and they're loving and they respect your belief. But in truth, they deny you and they deny your God. They deny your testimony and the love that the Lord has for you. And that's the importance and that you need to separate from unbelief. However hard that is. And, and, and some people lose everything. They um, have nobody. They only have their brothers and sisters and their uh, fellowship in, in, in Christ, in the Holy Spirit, with, uh, and the Father. And um, I, I am mainly alone in my life, isolated, but um, I rejoice because I have the fellowship of, uh, of, of the Lord and the Holy Spirit and the Father. And I do meet uh, brothers and sisters and... Uh, I meet people out in the street, so I, I don't, I don't find it a problem. You know, we're all in the body. We're all one 
in the body, wherever we are, whether we're in a little group or whether we are cut off or isolated or poorly in our sick bed, even if we're out of fellowship, we're all and um, out of the body, cast out of the body, we are still that body member part. Uh, I read, um, quickly read Second Peter and finish with First Corinthians chapter 12 but there were also false prophets also among the people even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies even denying the Lord that uh, brought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction now when it says swift destruction you may wonder well why, why isn't the Lord dealing with these swiftly then well the Lord's timing is is uh, a different time to our time scale. That swift destruction will be in in a, a point a pointed time. Now that may be in their individual at the end of their life, or uh, the Lord's dealt and judged with all these false teachers and heretics and uh, false prophets, and their destruction in the, it will be in in the moment of wrath in the last days. That's the swift destruction. Or if that person dies in their sins, that's their swift destruction because they've already been judged by the, by the Holy God and if they've rejected Jesus Christ and taught uh, heresy and falseness and they're not saved, they will be in hell and that, that will be their swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness covetousness shall they with fame words make merchandise of you whose judgment now a long time lingereth not and the day of damnation slumbereth not so their end will come um, let's go uh, chapter uh, 2 Peter chapter 3 for, uh, verse 5 for this they are willingly ignorant of the, by the word of God the heavens were reviled and the earth standing out of the water and in the water whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished but the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of godly men so there it is, there's the swift destruction um, and uh, these people have been judged and they will be judged so if you're put off by all this uh, people succeeding evil succeeding in the world um, you, you should you, you don't need to be because it's all in the Lord's sovereign understanding and plan uh, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but but his long suffering to us would not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So the Lord is um, doesn't uh, destroy people instantly. He's mercifully stretched out for their probation, the time of their probation, so that they may all come to repentance, that they may have an opportunity to escape the judgment. So the Lord's just and mercifully reached out. And, and the world will prosper in wickedness, because the... Uh, the world is ripening in apostasy and wickedness. <coughs> and so uh, this sort of behaviour is will go on. And that's why the Lord's given us out the word. That we can um, study it out and measure. As I read in the beginning, those, those who, are, who are approved and those who are not approved. But I know how off-putting it can be and how disheartening it can be to see and uh, but we uh, don't need to be disheartened by the flourishing of evil because the uh, Lord's uh, dealt with it. Let's read First Peter five. Uh, the elders which are among you exhort you, and also an elder, which is Peter, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not with filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but examples unto the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall, appear, 
ye shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder, yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud, and give grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because you first read the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. <coughs> whom resist, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. We've got that in common. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory, by Jesus Christ, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So the Lord has promised that we put all our cares upon him, put our faith in him daily, he will establish us and build us up. And uh, help us to grow in his word to be exalted in due time to be lifted and emboldened in, in his word by his grace and by his understanding of our indi individual needs because his grace is sufficient for our weakness no matter how poorly you are whatever background you have um, you may not have had a very good start and uh, you may not find anyone you feel that understands what you've been going through in your life. But you can rest assured that Jesus Christ knows you perfectly and intimately and he knows how to reach any, any person in any circumstances. I can testify to that. It, in my life, I didn't realise how complicated it really was and, and still is. And the Lord has faith, remained faithfully and restored me when my spirits cried. He's been there to meet me. And and sometimes I've wondered why, you know, I feel so barren. And but that's that's when the Lord's been telling me that's my uh, my own transgression and that I need to just uh, stop what I'm doing and return to being faithful and uh, obedient to His word. And so I seek to ever grow in that, um, do right and do what his will is rather than what other people telling me I should be doing. I would do this, you need to be doing that. Well, I need to know that for myself. I need to grow in the word and find out, well, is that person that's telling me you, you need to be doing this correct? Or is it their own fleshy mind, their own puffed up heart and then I can measure it and realise that well they're right or they're wrong right let's finish on um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 speaking of the body of Christ uh, I start in I won't read the whole chapter I start in chapter 13 for by one spirit are we all baptised into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, it is therefore not of the body. And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the body were hearing, where were the smelling? But now have God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it pleased him. And if you were all one body, where were the body? If you were all one member, where were the body? But now are there many they, now are they many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. Nor again a head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. 
and those members of the body which we think to be of less honour, less honourable, upon these we bestow more abundant honour. And our comeliness, comely parts have more abundant comeliness, for our comely parts have no need. But God have tempered the body together, having given much more abundant honour to that part which lacked. So we see that um, anyone who thinks that they're above themselves and they're leading the race and they are the only ones, you know, they are missing out, they're cutting out the need of all the body parts. And they are not mindful of all the body parts, so therefore they're not going to be supplying and thinking of those people. They're going to be thinking of themselves and their little cliques, their little following and their loyal supporters. And they will choke and starve and quench the body parts which lack. Whereas those who are giving more comeliness, um, uh, verse 23, we bestow more abundant honour and our comely, because if you, you consider like the Lord's grace, uh, there's people that are fully there, uh, those members of the body which we think to be less honourable. Uh, where, uh, let's read that again. And uh, those members of the body which we think to be less honourable, upon these we bestow abundant honour, as the Lord does, so the uh, the Lord's grace will be need more needful for the, the weaker than the stronger, so the stronger are filled, but the weaker are lacking, so the Lord's grace will uh, be poured out more upon the, those that need it more, to bring them up to speed with the ones that don't, that, that aren't lacking. For our comely parts have no need, so those in the body who are strong to start with have no need. But you have people in the body part who haven't haven't got those comely parts, so they will need more. Grace will need to abound more towards those people, and that's the the Lord's spirit and the spirit in the believer looking upon those people in in agreement with the spirit. For our comely parts have no need, but God have tempered the body together, having given more abundant honour to that part which lacked. Like that there should be no schisms, that there should be no difference, division, or, or that, you know, that person's bigger than me, that person's better than me. Uh, with the script, uh, I think it's James, you know, uh, uh, I find the scripture. The, per the brother in low degree rejoiced to know that he is um, exalted, or I'll read the scripture in a minute. That there should be no schisms in the body, but that that the members should have the same care one of another. And whether one member suffer, all members suffer with it, and one member be on it, all the members rejoice with it. Now, uh, now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And God has set some in the church first, apostles, secondary prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Our question, are all apostles, are all... Are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers in miracles, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all inter interpret, but cover earnestly the best gifts, and yet show um, you more in an excellent way. So Paul's talking to the, um, the transition of the uh, Lord's ministry and the Apostles' ministry unto the establishing of the faith which we are lively stones built upon, growing into the full stature in Christ, knowing that we all are, every body part is complete in Christ. And, uh, let's go to, <clears throat> so there's no schisms in the body, and the Lord's grace is sufficient, First Corinthians chapter 1, but, um, I'm going to go to, I think it's James, and finish off there. If I can't find it, I'll put it on the um, description of the editing. Uh, James 1, verse 9. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. But the rich in that he is made low, because he is a flower of the grass, he shall pass away. So don't be proud. God give grace to the humble. 
Let the brother and lady agree and rejoice in that he is exalted, that he's equal in the body, he's equal in Christ. He might not be equal in responsibility, but as a in the eyes of God, he's a, his beloved son as just as much as any other beloved son. Or, or sister is a son also in Christ. So that's my, that's my outreach for anyone who's um, perhaps struggling, perhaps buffeted, perhaps going through a fiery trial, to just encourage you to rest in the Lord, know you're saved, study the word each day in, with your heart in the spirit and, and seeking um, the Lord's uh, grace to meet your need wherever you wherever it's needed on a daily and it will be needed on a daily basis so I'm going to close there and wish everybody blessings and I hope that this will contend for the holy word and um, meet what is not often met out. That's, what, that's what I found that there's not not much compassion, not much understanding, and and uh, not to be resentful, but to be loving, even if you're weak. It does, you you can hurt people. You can um, do. You can cause as much damage as a, an elder, elder brother, a more mature brother. But to be humble and to be patient and to be just as much as an example as those who are more mature and experienced, but, but not to be resentful, not to hold a grudge, not to give way to the flesh, but to pray and be long-suffering to any frustration and to wait on the Lord and put all your care upon him and not be sifted away by the devil because he'll be all over you. Any weakness, he'll be all over it. So I pray that that will um, help somebody and, and that would be a lift for somebody. And that would perhaps will anybody who's um, a bit haughty or a bit uh, or out of the way of it and forget forget their uh, forget the weak member and, and not consider that they are worthy as they are because they may be um, a bit stiff necked. Maybe that will help them reevaluate their their standing so they don't fall. Um, so. Maranatha and every blessing to my brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.